all things Mavs. Former Dallas Maverick and Phoenix Suns Steve Nash has been hired by the Brooklyn Nets to become their next head coach. And yeah, we're talking about him because, of course, he's a former Dallas Maverick. But the more interesting news here is that Steve Nash tried to recruit his buddy and the greatest of all time, Dirk Nowitzki, to be an assistant coach along with him in Brooklyn. Now, Dirk quickly rebuffed this and he said, no, thank you. You know, I'm going to enjoy my ice cream. I'm going to gain some weight. I'm going to sit on my couch. I'm going to hang out with my kids and my wife. I have no interest in getting back into the NBA game full time quite yet. And I think another reason that Dirk probably said, no, this is just purely me speculating here. It's Brooklyn. Now, had Nash been hired by Dallas, maybe just maybe we could have seen Dirk here in that role. But I don't see him going to Brooklyn or any other team not named the Dallas Mavericks. Look, I got him, I got him on my shirt right here, repping at the right time. Now, between their years in the NBA, Dirk and Nash have really just collected all the hardware. 20 All-Star com appearances combined. Three times they've won MVPs. Twice from Steve Nash, once from Dirk, of course. 19 All-NBA selections. Dirk, of course, the only one with a ring in 2011. And then Steve Nash recently inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2018. And Dirk will be following closely behind. Now, here's my theory, and I'm going to throw this out there. I haven't said this to anyone else. I'm saying it to you guys. You get it first. Maybe Steve Nash is saying, hey, I'm going to go to Brooklyn. I'm going to coach there for a few years. Give me about four years to kind of groom myself as a head coach. By that time, Rick Carlisle would be on his way out the door, and then Steve Nash becomes the next head coach of the Dallas Mavericks, along with his assistant, Dirk Nowitzki. I think that is just a, a storybook ending to Steve Nash and Dirk Nowitzki's career together. Now, we're talking about Dirk, and I'm wearing him on my shirt. If you want to know where I got this shirt, it's Red Peg Tees. Dot com sponsor of the show they are diehard dallas maverick fans and dfw natives you go to redpegtees.com use that promo code redpeg20 that'll get you 20 percent off your entire order at checkout and if you want to get the one i'm literally wearing right now they call it the dirk illusion shirt redpegtees.com they got it for you go pick it up let me know if you bought one if you did send me a dm on twitter at all underscore things underscore mavs and i'll tweet it out for you now, I want to break down my Dallas Mavericks mailbag. I put it out on Twitter. I said, hey, send me any questions you might have. But what I want to do now, instead of Twitter, I want to use the YouTube comment section. So I want you to pitch me any and all your Dallas Maverick trade ideas by using hashtag trade in the comment section below. Give me a trade that you might want to see the Mavs pull off, and then I'll pull it up on my next video and kind of break it down really piece by piece and player by player. Let's go to the tweets here, starting with Jeffrey at my orange crash on Twitter. He said, which proven bigs could Dallas trade for this offseason? And then he uh, went on to make his own little commentary here. Dallas is going to trade the 18th pick. Donnie and Mark are the worst at drafting. Well, a couple years ago, they drafted a little guy named Luka Doncic and his buddy Jalen Brunson. That was a pretty good draft, if you ask me. They've also drafted Dirk Nowitzki. I guess they traded for him. But let's explore this big man trade market. Now, I, I broke it down into guys that have one year remaining on their deal. They're tough and they're veteran bigs. And I made them s from, from kind of home run unrealistic to very realistic. So the most unrealistic option I put out there, Rudy Gobert of the Utah Jazz. He's going to be a free agent coming up here soon, so maybe he's an option. Steven Adams is a guy that I know a lot of Mavs fans like to daydream about in a Dallas Maverick uniform. More likely than Rudy Gobert, but still highly unlikely that we're able to pry him away from OKC. A guy that I don't think a lot of people are thinking about but is on an expiring contract, Rashawn Holmes of the Sacramento Kings. He's a high flyer, and he is a tough, gritty dude down low. And then last but not least, a bad contract but only one year left, but he's a veteran that can really help the Mavs out right now, is Cody Zeller of the Charlotte Hornets. And I think it'd be really easy to make a trade for him and take that contract off of Charlotte's hands. Now, I just showed you four big men that I think the Mavs could trade for, but I want you guys to shout out a big man you want the Dallas Mavericks to trade for. Maybe it's one of those four. Maybe you got another name out there like a Kevin Love, a Blake Griffin, or a LaMarcus Aldridge. Whoever it may be, let me know in the comment section. Now, the bigs under contract for Dallas right now, they got Dwight Powell next year, Boban Marjanovic, of course, Kristaps Porzingis, and then Maxi Kleba as well. Willie Cauley-Stein has a $2 million player option, so he could be back, but not guaranteed quite yet. Now, I know a lot of people are infatuated with this idea of bringing in a center, bringing in a guy who can play the five, but 
we have a guy that plays the five. Christos Porzingis played the five position wonderfully. Now, I don't love the idea of him going up against the more physical big men because that's what he has to do if he's going to continue to play center. But when he played the center position after Dwight Powell's injury, he excelled in that role. He went from a 17-point-per-game guy to 25 points per game after uh, Dwight Powell blew out his Achilles. His three-point percentage went up, and his efficiency went up as he was getting to the rim more, and he was even posting up a little bit and taking advantage of his size. I really like Kristaps Porzingis in that five position. I really think that he can excel there. I don't think the Mavs necessarily have to trade for a center to play alongside Porzingis. I think he can play that role absolutely beautifully. But there is a chance that the Mavs go out and trade for a big man like a Steven Adams or like a Rudy Gobert. And so I threw around a trade idea here. This is mine. So if you hate it, you can call me out. If you love it, you can also call me out. Here's what I got. The Mavs get Steven Adams and the first round pick from Denver from the Oklahoma City Thunder. And the Thunder in exchange get Tim Hardaway Jr., Justin Jackson, the Mavs first round pick, which is going to land at 18, and Golden State's second round pick, which will land at 31. I think this is a very reasonable deal on both sides. I think the Thunder still probably say no because they're not getting enough young assets, but you do get two young, uh, two draft picks, excuse me, out of this. So maybe they say yes, I think it's possible. Now, Bleacher Report threw this trade out there. So this is not me, and I'm going to break this one down. Dallas gets Rudy Gobert, the Jazz get Maxi Kleba, Tim Hardaway Jr., Jalen Brunson, and this year's first round pick. And if I'm the Mavs, I'm saying no deal to this one, and here's why. Rudy Gobert is going to be a free agent in 2021. You could just wait him out. You don't want to give up Maxi Kleba, who has a great contract. You don't want to give up Jalen Brunson, who's on a rookie contract. And the 18th overall pick still has some value as well. I think this is way too much for Rudy Gobert. Sorry, Bleach Report. I say no deal. So I'm going to ask you guys this question as well. I love interacting with you all in the comment section. You already know that if you're a loyal watcher here on All Things Mavs. Who will be, I want you to make a prediction, who will be the starting center next year for Dallas? If you think it's going to be Chris Sotts Porzingis, you know what to do. Type that unicorn emoji down below. If you think it's Maxi Kleba, you know his celebration, the call me celebration. Use the telephone emoji. If you think it's Dwight Powell, oh, Canada. Use that flag. Or if you got another center that you want in mind or that you have in mind, comment it down below in the comment section. Let's go to S. Dot, not Seth Curry, but a user here tweeted at me, which Mavs are on the trading block slash are the most likely to be traded this offseason? Now, if you're like me, you get very much connected to the Dallas Mavericks very, very fast, and you are immediately in this mindset that you don't want to see any of your guys go. You love them all. Well, sorry, but that's just the nature of the NBA. That's just how business goes. Guys are going to get moved. And here is my most likely to be traded Mavs this offseason. I think DeLon Wright and Justin Jackson are far and away the top two. Tim Hardaway Jr., since he is on a one-year expiring, assuming he opts into his $18 million player option, definitely makes some sense as well. He proved himself as a good shooter. I think some team could use him. Jalen Brunson, only because he's a young rookie point guard, and besides guys like Luka or KP, he might be the most valuable trade asset the Mavs have. And then that's the same feeling I have with Maxi Kleba, who has a great contract. He is really, really valuable. I don't think the Mavs will trade him, but if they want to make a big move, they're going to have to either move him or Brunson or maybe Dorian Finney-Smith. Now, the two guys that I just mentioned that I said are by far the most tradable assets, DeLon Wright and Justin Jackson. I'm not even sure you can call Justin Jackson an asset at this point. Uh, you guys know I was on Justin Jackson Island for the longest time. I am here to admit to you personally that I was wrong. He's not good anymore. I am totally fine if we give him up for a second round pick that may not even convey at this point. There's just no room for Justin Jackson on this team. But I want to focus it on DeLon Wright because the Mavs had to trade for him last year. They signed him to a deal that at the time seemed pretty reasonable. You missed out on Patrick Beverly. You're like, all right, let's go get another defensive minded point guard. And at the time, that deal looked really good. And they gave up two future second round picks and the draft rights to Satnam Singh. And if you're a Mavs fan for life, you remember Satnam Singh. But two future second round picks at this point might be more valuable in the trade market than DeLon Wright is. I'm not sure what DeLon Wright is going to bring you back. He barely played in the bubble. He didn't even play in the elimination game six against the Los Angeles Clippers. I think DeLon Wright is as good as gone, and I'll probably do a video very soon on what the Mavs might be able to get for him. So I mentioned those five guys. I mentioned DeLon Wright, Justin Jackson, Tim Hardaway Jr., Maxi Kleba, and Jalen Brunson. But if you had to pick one that you're like, 
Adios, hasta la vista, see you never. Which Maverick would you most want to see traded away this offseason? For me, based on the value he, value he will probably bring back and the fact that he's just not that useful, I got to say DeLon Wright. Wouldn't be sad to see Justin Jackson go, but a small part of me still lives on Justin Jackson Island, so I can't be all the way in on giving him up quite yet, but I'm not going to be mad when he gets traded. Now, I'm almost at 7,000 subscribers. We are almost there. I, I think I put this up the other day, and I was at 6,300. I'm already at 6,500. So every single video, it's like we get an extra 200 subs. So you guys are the best. I appreciate you guys doing it. It means I'm doing something right, but you guys are the ones making the magic happen. So scroll down below, hit that big red button, help me get to 7,000 subscribers because we are almost there. Let's go to Zach who tweeted me this, and, and it kind of brought back some bad PTSD memories here. How much better would the Mavs have been had they gone with Goran Dragic in the Miami trade that went weird and didn't sign and trade for DeLon Wright? That, that's an excellent question, and it keeps me awake at night as I watch Goran Dragic play against the Milwaukee Bucks and help his team advance in the NBA playoffs because this dude has been amazing both off the bench and in the starting five for the Miami Heat. And Luka Doncic said it himself. He would love to have Goran Dragic on his team. It would make things easier for him. It would be another playmaker. And the Mavs almost pulled it off. I mean, they were this far away from having Drogic on this year's team. And that would have been an extra 16 points per game, an extra five assists, an extra 35-plus percent three-point shooter that can play make both off the bench and in the starting five alongside Luka Doncic. I would have loved Goran Drogic in this trade. Uh, it just it didn't happen. It fell through. However, Drogic actually is a free agent this summer and there's a chance that the Mavs go out and chase him so do you want Goran Dragic this summer type Y for yes type in for no you guys get to make the votes you guys get to make the call let me know down in the comment section do you want Goran Dragic this year because they missed out on him last year hey take a look at the point guards that the Mavs did have this season they had Luka Doncic they had Jalen Brunson but then Brunson goes down with the torn labrum and then they had Trey Burke in the bubble who 7.4 points per game, by the way. That is combined between the 76ers and the Mavs. He actually averaged 12 points per game with Dallas in just eight games plus the playoffs. They have DeLon Wright, who you expected to be the starter, but that didn't pan out. And then you had a 36-year-old J.J. Brea, who's on the cusp of retirement. So, yeah, a Goran Dragic would have helped this team a lot. And let me just recap how that night played out, the fateful night of June 30th, 2019. It's 9 o'clock. I'm leaving the Chat Sports studio. I'm driving. All of a sudden, my phone's blowing up from Mark Stein. Says, the Mavericks are going to acquire Kelly Olenek and Derek Jones Jr. from the Heat as a part of the Jimmy Butler signing trade. I'm like, what? what's going on? Why do we want Kelly Olenek or Derek Jones Jr.? And then Stein says that the Mavs are a huge fan of Goran Dragic, but they couldn't take him back in that Miami deal. Yada, yada, yada. Cap space, blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden, it all, all fell through. And then the Mavs didn't get anybody. And... Stein said the Mavericks maintained that they agreed to join the Jimmy Butler sign and trade under the belief that they were getting Kelly Olenek and Derek Jones Jr. The Heat reportedly did not want to surrender Derek Jones, and they said they must trade Goran Dragic to make the cap space work. So they could have had Dragic, they could have had Derek Jones Jr., they could have had Kelly Olenek, but instead they ended up with DeLon Wright, who barely played, turned the ball over, is afraid to shoot layups, and is an overrated defender. I think he's out the door this year, but let's just daydream like the Mavs did get Dragic, they did get Kelly Olenek, and they did get Derek Jones Jr. You're a lot deeper of a team. You got another playmaker, and all of a sudden, this Mavs team probably could have made a little bit more noise in the playoffs with Dragic and Luka in the backcourt, Tim Hardaway Jr. and Dorian Finney-Smith as your quote-unquote forwards, and Porzingis as your starting center, and all of a sudden, your depth is looking better with Derek Jones Jr. and Kelly Olenek. Look, I wish it could have happened, but maybe there's a chance for redemption with Goran Dragic this summer as he becomes a free agent. Guys, I appreciate you watching today's video. If you want to get on the next show, use that hashtag trade in the comment section.